Good evening, Brother Simmons. How is everyone? Brother Kelly. Brother Kelly. Hello, Brother Kelly. Hello. Yes, sir. We all good we evening. Lie. Good evening again, brethren. For those of you all who I did not get a chance to speak to, it is March the 14th, 2022, and we have gathered together again for another powerful session from Kingdom Men's Academy. You know, I heard the devil got nervous this morning because he, he found out when some good kingdom men hit the floor, he had something to be in fear of. Mm -hmm. So, brothers, we're going to kick this off. We're going to leave you in the hands of Brother Othello for our devotional period. Brother Othello, bring us on in. <laughs> You're on mute. Thank you, Brother Robertson. I was looking up uh, a word today is uh, consecrate. And uh, it's being, it means being declared or made sacred. And I believe each of us have made this Monday night a consecrated hour that we dedicate unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. And for this time, you have Brother uh, Spears, you have the floor for our devotion. Okay. Um, good evening, brothers. I hope... <clears throat> Hope everyone uh, start having a good week, uh, start off with a good Monday. Uh, for the devotion period, um, I'll be bringing our scripture and uh, Brother Kimball will be bringing our prayer. Um, I'll start off with the scripture. It'll be coming from Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. So Philippians chapter 2. Verses, verse eight starts with, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I've just read verses, uh, just read Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. May God bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his work. Um, and I'll pass it on to uh, Brother Kimball for the prayer. May we pray. Dear gracious and holy Father, dear Holy Father, we thank you for last night's sleep and waking us up this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, it was only you that woke us up this morning. We didn't do it ourselves. Dear Heavenly Father, as we go through a day, we ask that you continue walking with us, guiding us. We know we are all sinners to save by grace, but dear Heavenly Father, but we know you died on the cross, dear Heavenly Father, for our sins, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask for forgiveness for everything we have done, everything we have thought about, and everything we're going to do. Dear Heavenly Father, you hold yesterday, you hold today, and you hold tomorrow. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask a special blessing for our family members, dear Heavenly Father. Our family is in dear need of prayer, dear Heavenly Father. We know we're the men or the head of the family, dear Heavenly Father. Let us be a leader, dear Heavenly Father, that we could guide our family the right and way they should go. Dear Heavenly Father, we know if we bring them to you, dear Heavenly Father, everything will be all right. Money doesn't mean anything, dear Heavenly Father. Only you, dear Heavenly Father. Only you will last. Dear Heavenly Father, we have a special blessing for the ones over in Ukraine, dear Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Lift them up, dear Heavenly Father, as mm -hmm. they're getting attacked by Russia, dear Heavenly Father. We know they might get attacked by a man, but we know you hold everything, dear Heavenly Father. Hold them up, dear Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Let them continue to be strong, dear Heavenly Father. Give them what they need to be strong, dear Heavenly Father. Let the men be men and let the women be women, dear Heavenly Father. Guide them, hold them, feed them. Nourish them, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask a special blessing for the ones that are bereaved, dear Heavenly Father. I know the ones, I have uh, family members and friends who have lost loved ones in the last few days, dear Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Go with their husbands and their wives, dear Heavenly Father. Guide them, hold them, if it be thy will. Dear Heavenly Father, let them know that you're still on the throne, you're still in control. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, if we go through this meeting tonight, let the bless the facilitator, dear Heavenly Father. Give him words upon how, dear Heavenly Father. He might uh, lead the words that might t hold someone, that touch them, guide them, hold them. Dear Heavenly Father, as we go through this day, dear Heavenly Father, we can do nothing but ask for forgiveness for our sins and look up to you, dear Heavenly Father. When we look up, we know we can get up. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you and thank you again for everything you have ever done, everything you can do, and everything you will do. These days, your son, your holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much, Brother Kim. Thank you so much for praying for the folks over there in Ukraine. They're really in need of our prayers and our support. Thank you, Brother Spears, for also getting us started. And thank you, my brothers, for joining with us again for another opportunity to be encouraged through the Word of God at this Kingdom Men Academy 2.0. My name is Brother Philip Ware. Uh, I'm one of the facilitators tonight. And I'm not by myself. I got my two road dogs, Willis Robinson and Darren O'Neill. So don't start no stuff and it won't be no stuff. I'm the nice guy. Them other two guys, they ain't nice like me. So don't start no stuff and it won't be no stuff. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We got Reverend uh, Carlos Washington with us tonight. Hello, Reverend Washington. We're always happy to have you here with us tonight. Uh, Brother Frank Williams. Uh, the chairman of the co chairman of the Deacon Board, we want to thank him for always showing up, man. We appreciate you. Uh, Brother Reginald Mackey is here with us tonight. We don't see him too often, but he showed up last week and he showed up this week. Reginald Mackey, we are so happy to hear, see you, brother. And we're glad that you got you another background, man. You, you guys love Lily Grove, don't you, man? Y'all love the church, man. <laughs> and I'm always delighted to be around brothers who love Lady Grove, man. Thank you. Rudy Thompson is on. That's my that's my deacon right there. Rudy Thompson. And he's one of my deacons. I'm glad to have you. And all you deacons, all you deacons, I'm, I'm glad to have you. Milton Simmons is my church school teacher, man. When I first came to Lady Grove, man, uh, Milton, Tim, Milton Simmons gave me book, chapter, and verse. He said, brother, well, I don't know what you're going to get, but what you're going to get here. Is book, chapter, and verse. Milton Simmons, my first church school teacher. Glad to have you, Brother Simmons. Um, also, I heard one of the brothers mention Daryl Brightman. And Daryl Brightman uh, gave an awesome in a, uh, uh, in, in invitation to our church anniversary. He really spoke well. Him and his kingdom woman, the kingdom man and the kingdom woman, brother. Thank you, Brother Daryl Brightman. Uh, for showing up and showing out, and always God always got a kingdom man ready to give service whenever the call is. So we want to thank these brothers. Um, a food, we're going to go ahead and get started, but before we get started, there's a couple of announcements I want to share. Some information I want to share. Um, Reverend Washington, I I got an email talking about some brackets. Do you want to share with us what those what that's all about? Uh, brother, where thank you so much. Uh, if I got to tell them, they 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 probably not interested. If, if I got to tell them, they probably not even interested. But <laughs> but every year, gentlemen, there's this time of year we call it March Madness, and it's just a little fun. But uh, I must say, it's a blast if you're able to join us there. Uh, uh, just go into that link and and fill out those brackets. Your your chances are just as good as mine. So I welcome you to share with us. With that being said, brother, where on next Monday. We will not be here on Monday night. Uh, many of us, uh, many of you guys who, who've already uh, made, made known, we're going to the Rockets game on next Monday. So it's kind of the basketball fever right now. So thank you again for uh, participating if you're able to join in. If you have any questions, you can certainly email me or call me after the night or something. We'll work it out. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the Bracket Challenge Thursday, Thursday, beginning this Thursday. So you got till Thursday to, to research and get Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Washington. I think Thank you. Uh, these guys, just like me, we ain't always been saved, so we know something about them brackets and them pools and stuff like that. Uh, I, <laughs> we know something about the football pools and brackets and all that stuff. We ain't been saved all our lives, so we know something about them, Brother Reverend Washington. Thank you again. Is um, Peter Martin, is he on tonight? He's not on. He's not on. Well, um, and and Rick Visor, Rick Visor's not on either. Okay, all right then. Well, very good. We'll get past that. I'm here, brother. Where? Who's that? Rick Visor. Okay, uh, I think Reverend Washington mentioned about the game. Do you have anything else to add on that? Do you have any more tickets left? How yes. would you guys go about getting tickets if they want one? Yes, sir. Brothers, the game is March the 21st, Monday at 7 p.m. It's Houston versus Washington. We have 10 tickets left. So if you would like a ticket, you can email or contact Brother Washington or myself. And again, we will 
uh, transfer that ticket to you before Monday. And if we unsuccessful, you can pick up your tickets at will call. Thank you. Any questions? We'll call. Okay. Thanks, Very, good. Very good. Thank you so much. Rick. Rick, if you don't mind, can you put your number in the chat so that if guys want to contact you, they'll know your number. Can we do that? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, Peter Martin's not here. Well, Washington, do you know, in the, can you share with the guys about the, uh, what Peter Martin, uh, the March Madness, what he's doing? Can you share with us on that? Very good. One of the things that enables us to be connected as a big church, many of us, uh, I, I can't think of too many of us who can say we left a larger church to come here. So most of us have gotten now uh, a taste of what a big church looked like. We didn't come from that. Well, one way that we're able to connect with every member and to give member access to their own information is through a digital system called Shelby Next. It's that digital system that we're trying to rally the membership to visit on their own to see what's there, what's accurate, what can we update so that you can be connected. We have a lot of challenges trying to communicate with our community uh, through word of mouth and sometimes even through email. But these this, this tool that we have allows you to be connected in some coordinates, not just through men's ministry, through your Sunday school, through your deacon family ministry, and just to have you on the road. We'd hate for you to, to expire or, or, or pass, and, and then your family come up and say, hey, he's been a member at Lily Grove for 12 years, and there's no record of you being there. It's stuff like that that happens. If you up here, you'll notice that those things simply happen all the time. But it's 2022. You, you can see technologies all around us. And so that's the chosen tool that we want every member to at least shake hands with so you can make sure when we're doing what we do, we're doing it accurately with good information about you. So please find out what that's all about. That's what Brother Martin is trying to stimulate interest in this month. Uh, it's about our, our Shelby Next. It's not a curse word. It's just a tool we use to keep up with our members through the data and what have you. There's a lot of other benefits as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Reverend Washington. And I hope you guys go and find your way over to Shelby and get updated so we can know how to contact you. We want to see your picture. Some need, we got so many guys on this call with phone numbers. I have yet to see the face connected to those phone numbers and stuff. So we want to get want you to get on Shelby, update your information, show us a picture. And if it's if it's all if it's any way possible, join us at the at the basketball game. I think that's a good way for us to fellowship, get to know each other, and kind of let's learn and see your face and connect you and and uh, get to know you as a person. So I look forward to all those opportunities to fellowship, get to know each one of us, guys. Amen? Amen. Okay, with that being said, man, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with what the Holy Spirit has for us tonight. How many of you guys were blessed on last week? I think we had an awesome time on last week on uh, traveling with Jesus in the wilderness as he fought temptation. And I really enjoyed that. I'm sure, sure you guys enjoyed it as well. Tonight, we're going to just pick back up on that. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to have some breakout sessions. And what we're going to do in those breakout sessions, we're going to have facilitators, Rillis Robinson, Darren O'Neill, and myself. We're going to be facilitating those meetings. Those are breakout sessions. And one of the things we want to find out or we want to discuss in those uh, 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 breakout sessions it's what we talked about last week, Jesus' experience in the wilderness. We want to focus on that. Thinking on those things, we want to find and we want to ask our, ourselves, did, did Jesus demonstrate that he was uh, spiritually fit, spiritually fit, morally conscious, and biblically sound? If he did, how would you define, you know, whatever group you're in, how would you define what it is to be spiritually fit? How would you define what it is to be uh, uh, morally conscious and biblically sound? And how can we develop some traits to get us biblically sound, morally conscious, and spiritually fit? Those are some of the things we're going to be discussing in our breakout session. And when we when we resume, we reconvene, we're going to have one speaker from each group to share with us what they learn concerning these questions. Okay? Your facilitator will explain to you more as we get to our breakout session. So... Reverend Washington, 
we're going to spend, uh, I guess, 30 minutes. I guess we can spend 30 minutes in our breakout session and reconvene here uh, soon at 7.30. Would that be sufficient? Uh, Realist and O'Neill, would 7.30 be all right? Yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. Okay. Okay. Reverend Washington. Are we I think everybody's just about back, Brother Ware. I hope everybody had a good session. Yes, sir. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Brother Ware, is he back? Oh, there he I, is. I think Brother Ware is frozen. Brother, Brother Ware. Ware like... <laughs> Brother Ware looks frozen down there. Can y'all hear me? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Hear you now. Yeah. Reverend Washington, I said that group you gave me, them guys was on fire. <laughs> Ooh, we had some lions and eagles up in there, man. And they, well, I'm telling you, they did their homework. <laughs> I need to have them, I need to get them guys enlisted in my church school class, Reverend Washington. <laughs> them guys Reverend are Washington. Like the game, man. Reverend, Reverend Washington, let me let me say on behalf of our group, we didn't have no fire. We burnt the house down. Right? I think they <laughs> did. I think we did too. So. <laughs> well, well I must say. I must say about my group, dude, we, we set the whole community on fire. We didn't just right. burn the house down. All right. Very good. Very good. Uh, now y'all going to be sleeping outdoors the rest of the night. <laughs> See, we kept our house. I think we had an awesome time man, with our breakout session, man. I got a chance to hear some guys and meet some guys that I don't get a chance to to hear very often or see them speak very often. But they spoke tonight and we had an awesome time talking about, in our group, we talked about uh, what it means to be biblically sound. Did Jesus demonstrate that he was biblically sound? And it was a resounding, yes, he did. What did he do to become biblically sound? What did he do to illustrate that? Well, we got a guy named Brother Melvin Thompson that's going to share Excellent. with us uh, what he gleaned from all the comments and all the feedback that he got from the guy. Brother Melvin Thompson, you got about two to three minutes. Can you share that with the guy? You on mute. You on mute. You on mute, Brother Thompson. Yeah, I think you gave me 29 minutes worth of information. And now you want me to condense it to two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we talked about what it meant to be biblically sound and when did Jesus become, how did he become uh, biblically sound? And I wanted to add to our discussion that it started at the time of his birth uh, when he was. 12 years old, he was becoming biblically sound because he was found in the temple. And when his mom and dad asked him what was he doing, he was saying he was being about uh, his father's business. And so uh, I would gather from that is that if you are going to become uh, biblically sound, you need to start as soon as possible because that, uh, that just doesn't come overnight. And when he uh, was tempted by the devil, uh, he was at 30 years old, but to get to the point where he was when he was tempted by the devil, he had to go through some things and uh, achieve some things that would make him ready for that, for that time. And so uh, one of the things that we looked at is that uh, becoming biblically sound, he had to spend time with God. He spent time before he went into the uh, uh, when he went into the wilderness, but before he even went into the wilderness, uh, there's records of, of him spending time with the, with the Lord uh, yeah. in prayer and in uh, uh, meditation. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then uh, one of the other things that made him biblically sound is that he used the scriptures. He had to uh, study to show himself approved. And so that just didn't happen overnight either. Uh, that is a uh, a sense of uh, spending time with the Lord and that he was uh, led by the Holy Spirit. And that was just a number of things that he did uh, to show himself uh, biblically sound. 
Uh, the thing that we said that he did is that he had a he had a working knowledge of the scripture, and uh, he was able to to use the scripture, and so uh, that that comes over a period of time as well, and so he uh, did that, and as he went uh, into the wilderness, uh, we said that one of the requirements for that uh, it was that he had he had on the full arm of God, and so. If we are going to be uh, uh, biblically sound and spiritually sound, the best thing that we can do is uh, imitate Jesus. There you go. Uh, lean not to our own understanding, but uh, yeah. In all uh, our ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him, yes. And uh, not the definition that we came up for what it means to be biblically sound, it was a working knowledge of the word of God that leads to action. No need of knowing the word and not applying it to your life. So act upon the word uh, and spend time with the Lord. Amen. Amen. You heard him, Willis Robinson. You heard him, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard him. He, he did real well. He, but you just wait. You just wait. You just wait. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Melvin Thompson. Awesome, awesome regurgitation of what we discussed, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> Who names Willis or O'Neill? <laughs> we, 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 we could be next. Uh, okay. okay. We have to deal with, with uh, being morally conscious. Okay. Uh, we had a, a great discussion on that scripture, Matthew 4, 5, 1, 3, 11. And uh, we uh, have Brother... Eric, Eddie Smith, Eddie Smith, who is going to break the bread of life for us tonight, based on what we discussed tonight as it relates to being Jesus, being morally conscious and how we can be like Jesus. Brother yeah. Smith, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. So good evening, brothers. Um, we had talked about uh, brother, brother Willis had asked us the question, what is, um, do we think Jesus was morally conscious when he was, when he was in the wilderness? And that was uh, one of the one of the uh, out of the two questions that he asked us, and 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 we we had discussed that Jesus was was morally conscious, and and you have to be you have to be strong like what uh, what the brother had mentioned before, brother brother Melvin had mentioned before. You have to be strong in the Word. You know, you have to you have to know God for yourself. And of course, in the Scripture here, uh, when it says in even in verse one, then Jesus was led by the Spirit. So Jesus was 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 full of the spirit when he was led into the wilderness for this temptation. And you know who you know, the enemy knows exactly who you are. The, the enemy know knew who Jesus was. Remember, Jesus, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, Satan has access to heaven. So he knew who Jesus was. Yes. And so therefore, the enemy, the enemy is going to going to come at every angle in, in all different ways of, of throwing that temptation at you. And so. It's, it's important to 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 know to know the word to know to know God and who mm -hmm. He is and who and who's leading you and who gives you strength and therefore Jesus says having to, to quote these scriptures don't don't tempt me you know who I am mm -hmm. this is what the word says this ain't what this is this not what so so therefore we can't we can't lean upon our own understanding just like you just like the brother we we quote also the same scripture trust in the Lord in all our ways. And 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 lean not to our own understandings, but in all thy ways, excuse me, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. And and the uh the, the second question that was asked to us is how can we develop our conscious in our time of testing? And so uh again, knowing knowing the word, trusting in God, staying focused on God, um, important to to develop awareness of what what pleases God. Therefore, what pleases God is to, is to constantly stay in communication with him. And that is through prayer. There's mm -hmm. nothing stronger than staying, staying in touch with him and with prayer. And a good example that, that, uh, that Reverend had brought up to us, don't try to fix the roof while it's raining. You got to go ahead and you know, you got to go ahead and get to your knees before, before the storm, before you get to to continue to stay in prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, cause, well, cause when that storm comes through, you're gonna need you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna need somebody to 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 help you through it. That's nobody but but the will of God. <clears throat> and so a, a daily supplement of the word. Continue to stay in prayer. Continue to study. Show thyself approved. Stay in the word. 
stay connected to brothers that 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 is that is that is see those seasoned brothers yes those yeah. seasoned brothers that have that have gone through those storms that that have those scars that have those markings stay close to those brothers don't don't let them go because like i say the devil is constantly trying to get us as soon as we leave those church doors the devil is constantly trying to get us to lose focus on what on what we heard from from the pastor there you go <clears throat> so Good, thank you, Smith. thank you so much, Brother Smith. Yeah, man. That, 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 that's the nutshell, Brother, Brother, uh, Brother Ware. We we brought the thing home today. We brought it home today. Thank you so much, Brother Smith, for you. Thank you, Brother Smith. Absolutely. God bless you, man. God bless you. <laughs> Who's next? Number, <laughs> okay. Number five. Oh, yeah, the apostle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, An we, <laughs> we, we, I think we had just an awesome time as you guys have, have had as well, man. We had a, as soon as I got in the group, I said, oh, yeah, I don't have to do much talking. We got some heavy hitters in this group. Yes, sir. But we definitely had an awesome time. And we talked about being spiritually fit. And mm -hmm. so one of our brothers, Brother Atchison, is going to give us a a summary of what we talked about in our group. Yes, sir. Relax. Hello, good evening. So good evening. Uh, two questions that were asked to us was how Jesus showed that he was spiritually fit in the wilderness, and then how could we show that we were spiritually fit as well? I think the analogy that we made was based on uh, athletics, like weightlifting and sports, to where uh, you have to continue doing things to repetition so you have to constantly pray you have to uh, you have to remain uh, unshakable in your word like jesus did uh and, like when satan was trying to tempt him said it's written and like he was never actually like there was never a doubt in his mind that i'm not going to be tempted by you because i know god i am with god and through that, we should be doing that as well through daily prayer and having a relationship with the Holy Ghost so we actually can build our relationship with Christ through daily supplication. So we can actually build up a muscle memory um, where we actually can recognize when Satan is trying to tempt us, like the subtleties of things. Like we were discussing the fact that if you are actually are in the word, the Satan might try to do try to get around you and try to tempt you in ways that you might not openly see on a regular basis. And the only way you actually can recognize that is through daily supplication. Just putting your faith in the action. Very good, very good. Wee! Yes, sir, hey. yes, sir, yes, sir. He was paying attention, wasn't he, Gordon? He was paying attention, not attention, but attention. <laughs> Young adult power. Yes, yes sir. sir. God bless you, man. God bless you, man. <laughs> Guys, our mission statement is that we are kingdom men who assemble each week to encourage other Christian brothers to become spiritually fit, morally conscious, and biblically sound, and ready for Christian service through regular fellowship with other Christian brothers. That is what our objective is. That's our mission statement, man. We want to encourage you guys to be everything that you talk, that you uh, discussed in your small group today, man. We, the world is in need of not just leaders, but true leaders, man. And the very start to becoming a true leader, you have to be spiritually fit, morally conscious, and biblically sound, man. Man, one of the things that I love, I love this ministry, man. And I love the people, the men of this ministry, man. And ain't no doubt about me, man. Ain't no doubt about it, man. You guys are spiritually fit. You're morally conscious. You biblically sound, man. They can't pull the wool over your eyes and tell you it ain't, it ain't what it is, man. You guys are ready. And we want you guys to continue to be all that you can be, man, for Christ. So whenever God get ready to call and you just say, I need a man to stand in this gap, he can pull from this group. And he had, we got somebody who's ready, man. So thank you all so much, man. We've been spending about a whole month on our mission statement, man. And I enjoyed every moment of it, man. And I think we are really fit and we're really prepared, man, for whatever God has ready for us. 
Willis Robson, O'Neill, did y'all want to add anything to that? No, I just want to say that I'm very excited, still excited, uh, about what's getting ready to happen with the men's ministry. But for tonight, brothers, you are off, as the young folks say, you are off the chain. Uh, the reviews were great. Uh, yeah. I get on and talk about my group. My, the brothers in, in our group, we were on top of it. And I want to thank you, brothers, for preparing yourself to come to men's ministry or Kingdom Man's Academy on Monday nights. Because it takes a lot to give up your night every Monday night to come to sit with brothers. But this time, you're sitting with brothers who you love. Yeah, you you yeah, yeah. with brothers who will help you to grow stronger because mm -hmm. the word is iron sharpens iron. And brothers, I want you to know that you're sharpening me just yes. by me being in your midst. And I really, really, really do appreciate and love each and every one of you. There you go. Amen. Amen. And, and I would like to piggyback off of that as well. I, I shared this with the brothers in our small group setting. And again, man, we had an awesome time. Um when I come on on Mondays and I tell you guys how excited I am to be on Kingdom Man's ministry, man, I seriously mean that because I literally look forward to, to, to sharing and fellowship with you brothers and doing a lot of listening and learning. And for each the three brothers who did the reviews tonight, hey, man, you guys did a wonderful job, man. And again, just to ditto with Brother Robinson said, we have some awesome things coming up for this kingdom men's academy so i look forward to to what the lord would allow us to do for it to impact the kingdom and the things to come very good very good very good guys so um i think um uh, brother reverend washington you have anything you want to add to it yes sir uh, i want to again say gentlemen what we seek to do here is not cosmetic i hope it's transformational mm -hmm. uh you you've heard the word uh he, jesus tells nicodemus uh that which is born of water is water but that which is born of the spirit is spirit uh he was talking about transformation water will wet you cosmetically but when it dries it'll be the same old thing but when fire gets hold of something it'll never be the same again Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's what my prayer is for what happens on Monday night is that we're not just bonding for cosmetic change. We're bonding for for a deeper change, transformational change. Can't you see the, on the news how much how much we need male change everywhere in every industry? And I want to thank our leaders, our commanders for motivating that. Now, let me give a high five to those men who've already stepped up to the plate in this setting, as well as those who did the work on this weekend with the volunteers and all of those things. But gentlemen, if you like something, the evidence is you'll keep doing it. Mm -hmm. If you really like it, if we are high-fiving everybody, then come back and be a part of us. But you don't even have to wait till a Monday night episode. There are Sunday school sessions that you can be a part of and we expect you transform fire bar, bar, burn men to bring transformation in your Sunday school classes, to, to motivate other brothers in church school to want to be a part, not just this, but to make our church better. There is no shortage of churches. Churches all over the city. It's men groups all over the city. But my prayer is that ours will be effective enough to change men, change community. What Jesus did with 12 men we ought to at least have 13 out of the 60 that we have. We got we ought to at least have 13 out of the 61 men that are online tonight who 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 are saying, God, here I am, use me. So uh -huh. it's got to be more, more he can do with us than he possibly did with 12. But if we can believe that and allow God's spirit in us, it's nothing you can't do with 60 men. I'm serious. It's, it's almost nothing you can't do with 60 men. And our church is made up of far more than 60 men. So let's be, on, be excited about what our missions are. And our, our, our commanders have laid the foundation of what our mission is about. But we ain't scratching. So we've won no trophies yet. U of H is a great school. TSU, great school. But they've won nothing yet. They've <laughs> won nothing yet. So we, we've won nothing yet, even though we're motivated and we're encouraged. But, man, our greater victory is to con conquer ahead. So thank you guys for making Monday special. Let's pray for one another. Let's try to get more young men involved and try to direct them to church school, to direct them 
to be better. And I, and that way, Lily Grove Church is not just some mediocre men gathering. Man, this is this is transformational. Excuse me, I went on a minute, but but thank you so much. Yeah, Rick. Yeah, brothers, let me clarify something. Uh, when we when we meet next Monday, we would not be. Uh, on a Zoom call, we're going to be at the Toyota Center. And, and, and this is what I want to clarify. The church has sponsored and purchased 30 tickets. Now, don't let these tickets go in vain. These mm -hmm. tickets are free. I, I don't think I never said that. So they're free, and they've been purchased by the church, and it's one ticket per kingdom man. So give me a call if you want a ticket, and we'll see you on next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Thank you, Amen. brothers. Thank you, brother Rick. Now, Rick, I want to get a ticket too, and I want to be sitting right between Irvin Johnson and Willis Robinson. That, that's going to be the show right there. I don't care what the Dude, rock is. Going for punishment. Show. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, you mean that's going to be the wilderness right there. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's going to be the entertainment right there. Uh, Irvin Johnson, you have some words you want to share with us before we go? Yeah, I just want to make a report. I thought Brother Bowser might say something. Uh, it's, we, it was a couple of accomplishments that uh, we've had. But, uh, and I, I guess I may want to use this in, that, in the Bible where uh, Jesus, you know, got in the boat with Peter and, and he preached from the boat. And, uh, and when he was preaching from the boat, uh, after he got through, he, you know, the people heard him, but then he allowed Peter to experience him because he said, you know, we want to go back out and I want you to cast your net you know, on the other side or what have you. And he caught so many fish that uh, the boat or whatever couldn't hold it or the net couldn't hold it. But what I'm saying is that the people heard him, but Peter experienced him. And Peter actually, and I guess the, the, the lesson in that was that a lot of people like we on this lesson, a lot of people hear the lessons that are being taught, but sooner or later you got to apply it. And so, um, and the application was, was, was used. Uh, Lily Grove gave uh, one of our members, uh, uh, Ken Johnson, uh, uh, where we fixed this house up and uh, repaired the roof and stuff. You know, I mentioned one of the other deacons told me don't say nothing else about that possum. But anyway, we closed the possum, I mean, the hole up on the back of his house where the possum got in. And, uh, but we still have some work over there to do. I, you know, Lily Grove did its part, but us members uh, uh, of the Kingdom Men, we, we need to do our part. So I'm going to uh, get a time when we all can get over there and finish the work. Also, uh, where we went out and passed out the uh, goods to the homeless people, where we, there was a blessing Sunday. Uh, I was not at church. Brother Vaz was not at church, but uh, I got a call that a person was there that we witnessed to in the streets, the lady's name, Angel. She was a homeless person in a car. She slept in an abandoned car and she came to church and she was looking for us. And so they FaceTimed me and she said, I kept my word and I'll be back next Sunday. Amen. Uh, so I just want to let you guys know Amen. that we don't want to just... Yeah you know, be hearers, but we also want to be doers. So let's make sure that, you know, we're hearing the lessons, but we also got a lot of work to do. And I said, it's time for men to come out the closet. You know, people, everybody coming out the closet, but we want us to come out of the closet Amen. and be men, be what we're supposed to be. Thank Very you. Good, brother Johnson. Man, that is special, Brother Johnson, to have go and serve someone in the streets and then have them looking for you in church, man. That is special. And that wouldn't have happened, Brother Johnson, if you hadn't got out your house and went to the streets, man. Amen. Thank you so much for being obedient uh, to, the, to the spirit and letting them use you. I also want to recognize Brother Jomaine Spears. Jomaine Spears has been some doing some volunteering over at the uh, elementary school. Am I correct, Brother Spears? Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, how's that going, Brother Spear? Um, oh, it's going great. Going great, you know, enjoying it. So thank you. Thank you. So, thank you there man. you go. Very good. Guys, that's that's um 
there's four components of our spiritual development. First one is worship service. We want to hear the word, okay? We come on Sunday and hear the words. The second component is a church school class. And I want to encourage all of us to be in a church school class. The third component is the Kingdom Men Academy, which we're doing right now. But the fourth component is service. Service. That's the fourth component. And all of these components is the, is the components that's in place to help us become spiritually developed. We want to be kingdom men. And those four components are in place to help us become spiritually developed and, be, and become the kingdom man. And I do not want us to neglect that part of service. We all, to, all be doing some kind of service, volunteering our time or serving in some capacity somewhere in the church or in the community, man. There's a man for every place and there's a place for every man. And I pray that all of us find out where our place is and serve that gift to the world, man. Amen. Brother Rillis Robson, would you kind of take us on out and, and uh, acknowledge our new people, yeah, uh, make your assignments, and get ready to close us out. Thank you. Yes, sir. Before we do that, Pastor Washington, have we had any brothers pinned lately? Uh, it's been a month. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since we okay. have. So we need to get back to work on that, brothers, so we can get some more brothers involved in the Kingdom Men's Academy. And Brother uh, Rillis Robson. Can I just say that Brother Dokes has been on his J-O-B. Absolutely. Absolutely. Brother Dokes has been gathering them up. He's been getting them ready, getting them prepared. And when they prepared, he sent them to Brother O'Neill, myself, or yourself to get to recite the O. He is on his J-O-B. So I really want to acknowledge Brother Dokes for doing his due diligence to getting these guys prepared to get pinned. So thank you, Brother Dokes. Thank you, Brother Rob. Amen. 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 We, we, we do want to thank Brother Doug and his team for the work that they're doing because he told me that he's already earmarked some brothers to step in because he's younger than he used to be. So he's going to get, get some brothers to take over for him very soon. But we want to again thank you, Brother Doug, for the work that you do. Uh, we're encouraged by the brothers that's coming on. We know the Kingdom Men Academy is going to continue to grow. Um, so for the first prayer, we're going to ask Brother William Jones. I called on him last week to answer a question he got off, but he, he's back yeah, now tonight. Brother William, Brother William, you had something you wanted. I think Reverend Washington had something. To... Reverend, Reverend, I couldn't see you. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I, but before you close it, I just wanted, can, can I just do this? I want to high five a couple of folks because uh, a couple of men who, who join us regularly and they're not a part of our fellowship actually one is brother win some of y'all already know leon leon is a brother of, of willis robinson but brother win has been loyal to this kingdom men's academy from the yeah. start and i want to thank him for continuing to make this a priority for him he's a part of us and i want to shake shake just just give him a shout out that he continues to fellowship with us i also wanted to fell uh, uh highlight atchison atchison you ain't joined yet have you atchison but atchison joins in with us a young man to be a part of us and i know he knows what's going on around here but thank you for making that that step and then uh we had brother brown J J uh gerald brown who's with us tonight he was with us earlier i'm not sure if he's still online but he joined us last week from uh fort myers and i just want to acknowledge his his lords and then don kimball has his uncle with us don uh brother brother uh kimball will you uh, uh at least welcome or introduce your your uncle joined us tonight Yes, I want to introduce my uncle. He's from San Francisco. He, he appeared visiting Houston for a couple of weeks, him and his wife. His name is Al Allen, and I let him uh, speak. Go ahead. Uh, I want to thank you for what I've heard tonight. Yes. <laughs> I love to see the men of God mm -hmm. trusting him and stirring his word. Mm -hmm. And I certainly think that you are all doing that. Uh, I live in a area, San Francisco, it's hard to get men together. Oh, wow. And and and, and there's a lot of them there, but they're, they're hard to get together yeah. uh, as Christian men. And so I say one thing, keep it up. Uh, and may God bless you. 
Oh, bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you so much. For yeah. Thank you. I, must mention, too, I must mention, too, he's 92 years old. What? Man, amen. God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, Look like hey, it. the fountain of youth, then. He looks good. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Uh, bless you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Brother, brother so Ware. Yes, sir. Brother, brother, brother Ware, could you see if there is a Harvey Johnson on tonight? Was Harvey Johnson. Harvey Johnson, uh, uh, Reverend Washington, do you see a Harvey Johnson? I, I don't know that name. He's not identified. Harvey Johnson? Yeah, he. See a I James don't... Johnson. I don't see a Harvey Johnson. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, I'm got the phone numbers up there. We can't hardly tell. Well, well, thank you guys for sharing this. That's the that's the ultimate testimony is that you're willing to share what we do. Thank you all for talking about it. There you go. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, to the prayers, we're going to ask Brother William Jones to give us the first prayer. Uh, Brother, Brother Ross, I'm sorry. Is, huh? is, is there any other new people on? Yeah, very good. Hey, brother, Brother Robin. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, yes, y'all, I'm, I'm mobile, kind of working here. I don't want to be a distraction in the prayer, but I'm listening. Okay, we'll ask Brother Dukes to do our, no, we'll ask Brother Dukes to do our first prayer. Thank you. All right. Appreciate you, Brother Robinson, for thinking about it. Always, man. Always. All right. Okay. Any, any new people, any other new people or, or visitors? Good evening. My name is Parcher McGreen. I'm uh, KD Green's brother. What? I just uh, joined in just to hear, hear you guys th this evening. I was a part of that group asking about. Um, you, about the word and if we were um, uh, acknowledge the word uh, li living the word reading the word and understanding the word and then pu putting it to practice thank you man thank you for being here man I'm telling you he was in that and listening we took some notes down Brilliant Robinson a visitor man, I'm tell I, tell you, I tell you we had a special group man I'm telling you that group was special man I'll let you get away with that, Brother Ware. <laughs> brother Dokes, again, we'll ask you to do the first prayer. And ask my brother, my biological brother, Mr. Leon, Brother Leon, when do our second prayer? Yes, sir. And our treatment tonight is Brother Reginald Mack is going to do our Kingdom Man's Oath. That's a, that's a sight, see. Hmm? <laughs> Eternal God, our Father, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is once and again that you allow a few of you weak and number serving to gather ourselves together in your name. Realizing, oh God, that we're not even worthy to call upon your name. But you being the God that you are, you look beyond our fault and you saw to our every need. We thank you, oh God, that we have a position in Christ. We have a place in our home. More than that, we have potential for service in Christ. Yeah. And our purpose in the world is to go out and tell somebody that you live because you live with our heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I pray that you continue keeping us close together as a group. Teach us to pray the thing you have us to pray for. Huh? Continue to crown our head with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we may be able to go out and tell a dying world that it's truly a reality and serving a true and living Savior. We pray for our pastor, our, our associate pastor. Continue propping them up on high. Give them a word from on high because we need to hear a word from you through them, dear God. Mm -hmm. Let the words of that mouth and the meditation of that heart be accepted in your sight. Oh, Lord, we need you, and we can't get along without you. Because there, every time we have a desire to do good, evil is always present. Always but your word say, look to the hills when we're coming down here. Uh -huh. And all our help come from the Lord, yes, sir. who made the heaven and earth. Thank you, Father. And then, dear God, when it's yours to call, and I have to answer Cross us over to the other side as only you can. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that I ask it all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Doe. Dear God, our Father, we come again this evening to say thank you. Personally, I want to thank you for last night's rest and this morning's rising and your guidance throughout this day. Asking that you would forgive me for my sinful ways, thoughts, and actions, if there be any. See for me where I cannot see for myself. I praise you for all that you've done for all of us that are on this call tonight. 
Thank you for every word that has been spoken from every man it emanated from. We pray that you'd enable us to glean from this meeting that that you'd have us to put in practice in our lives that we might be better, that we too may show others that there's a reality in serving a true and a living God. Thank you now for all that you've done, all that you're doing and that that you will do. Thank you for this another Monday night and the willingness for those of us that are on this call to come together to share and to listen and to learn your word that we too may be better, that we may be spiritually fit and sound to interact wherever the opportunity avails itself. Mm -hmm. Teach us how to pray yes, and Lord. what things to pray for. Mm -hmm. Be our guide and be our keeper. Straighten out the crooked paths in our lives, if you will. Mm -hmm. and bring down the hills in our lives. Yeah. Go with us all and stand by us. Pray especially for Lily Grove as a whole, each member name by name. Mm -hmm. And that pastor and leader, we pray and we ask that you would just have mercy on them where mercy would suit their case. Oh, yeah. I yeah. pray for New Hope where I am a member, our pastor we pray for. We pray for wisdom and knowledge that he may teach your people and touch our ears that we might hear. And then motivate us that we might do your will in a manner that's pleasing in your sight. Yes, Lord. Bless those that are less fortunate than we are, those mm -hmm. that are sick, those that are bereaved. Please have mercy where mercy would suit our case. Bless our homes, our families, our every endeavor. Please look and have mercy on us. But we know that you are God, and besides you, we can't do anything. But in you, we live, we move, we have our being. Yes, yes. Be with us tonight. Be with us tomorrow. You know what you have in store for us. Grant us the ability to accept your will in a manner that's pleasing in your sight, that we might demonstrate what it means to be a Christian man and a kingdom man in this world today. And dear God, when we've done all that you've assigned our hand to do on earth, pass a place in your kingdom where we might praise your name forever. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Liam. Amen. It's my turn. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to say I'm I'm very happy to be on, and uh, I thank you all for that pen. Uh, I use it for two purposes: oh, one to be identified as a king man, and the other is to remember what suit I wore last week. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get down to what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, repeat after me. As a kingdom man. As a kingdom, as a kingdom man, man. I stand. I stand. stand. Acknowledge. 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 My position in Christ. My, my position, position in Christ. Christ. My place in the home. My, my place, place in, the home. in my home. My potential for service in my church. My, my potential, potential service, service in my church. And my purpose in the world. And my purpose in the world. As a kingdom man. As a kingdom, kingdom, kingdom man. man. Stand. I stand. stand. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. My position in Christ. My, my position, position in Christ. Christ. My place in my home. My, my place, place in my home. 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 His potential for service in his church. Service in my church. My church. And my purpose in the world. And my purpose in the world. Amen. 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 <laughs> we need to repossess that pen. Let's repossess that pen. Get a Academy Award for that. Get that pen tomorrow. Get that pen tomorrow. Man, bro. He gave me a pen. He gave me a pen. get that pen back. If you don't get that pen back, I won't get that pen back. Now, we just going to do the one that. Give him a big safety pin to put in that tutor wall last week. <laughs> <laughs>